too much. Um, this is not going to be the uh, the slickest presentation we've had this week, but um, I'm hoping that you appreciate it. It's largely coming from the heart and um, representing my view and the view of, I think, quite a lot of other people. Um, this paper is going to attempt to present the perspective of a British archaeologist who has taken advantage of the EU, EEA, freedom of movement to work both in this country uh, and quite extensively elsewhere in the EU. Um, I also hope to present a case for EU nationals working as archaeologists in the UK at the moment. Um, I can't put a precise figure on the size of this group. I suspect that probably across the rest of Europe there are maybe something in the region of 200 British archaeologists in academia and in field work. I suspect there's a much larger group of EU nationals at the moment working in the, in, uh, in the UK. There is no doubt, at least in my mind, that one way or another this group is going to be affected by Brexit. And no? Yeah. Um, so since 1980, I've worked as an archaeologist in Europe and in the UK, and um, even further afield. In recent years, mainly in Scandinavia. Um, lots of factors have contributed to my portfolio career not least the consideration that there has to be greater opportunity and diversity in a community such as the EU, measuring 5 million square kilometres and numbering 500 million citizens, um, more than uh, 20 times the size of the UK, and, and uh, you know the UK is one-tenth of that population. I believe that um, as Europeans we hold much more in common in our heritage and culture than that that divides us. I was in Sweden um, last June, um, one of four Brits amongst a team of 50 or so archaeologists uh, on an urban project in Gothenburg. And uh, in the early hours of uh, June the 24th, sat in my Swedish living room watching BBC World News, getting more and more shell-shocked and worried as the lead vote piled up. Uh, although I didn't immediately realise it, I was, of course, beginning to display all the signs of refusing to accept the democratic decision of that 52%. I had become a Romaniac. Um, what were my initial worries? Um, a number of reasons, really. Um, obviously, I'm an archaeologist who works in the UK and the EEA. I have friends and colleagues in the same situation. I work for universities, national heritage boards, commercial companies. Um, <laughs> all of those which I suspected would be affected by Brexit. Um, I had fears about the public funding for archaeology, which I've derived from EU funds or is inspired by EU-funded projects. Um, and whilst I could never claim that the EU is a perfect institution, it just seemed to me that the benefits of remaining far outweighed the benefits of leaving. <coughs> During the um, referendum campaign, um, ele elements of the media drew upon historical and archaeological illusions suggesting that heritage itself was sufficient reason for distancing the UK from continental Europe. Um, it follows a premise that uh, there had once existed a glorious UK past uh, whose continuity the EU posed both an implicit and explicit threat. I've got no evidence that uh, any part of the referendum campaign was directly uh, directed specifically against archaeology or archaeologists, uh, but one wonders, given the hostility shown by Brexiteers to any form of dissent against the result, whether that will always be the case. At some future date, it seems inevitable, given the paucity of the glorious past argument, that a backlash will ensue, perhaps more targeted against archaeologists or historians those of us brave enough to critique the Brexiteers' view of our collective past. UK nationals working in other EU countries will no doubt be wing-clipped by the Brexit vote, and there's already anecdotal evidence that um, UK citizens applying for uh, long-term posts in the EU are either not getting interviews or are not getting jobs that they might have expected to have walked into a year or so ago. 
I mean, I hope that arrangements will be reached where it will still be possible to work within the EEA area. But such arrangements will probably become laden with extra layers of bureaucracy. As someone who worked in Europe before freedom of movement, I can recall the hours spent waiting at airports, police stations, and the like, getting documents and permissions verified, having to attend medicals to ensure that I wasn't bringing the Black Death back to one of its source nations, and often having to take out separate and expensive insurances, private health liability insurances, um, let alone the difficulties of opening <coughs> bank accounts, transferring funds back to the UK, etc., etc. The situation will become equally difficult for the large number of EU nationals currently working in the UK. EU systems do not at present require visas to work in the UK, but that is likely to change following Brexit. Archaeology is not at present a protected profession with regard to granting work visas, and it seems likely following Brexit that foreign archaeologists wanting to work in the UK will be subject to the most restrictive forms of visa. The worst case scenario could be that employment would require a minimum salary level before a visa is granted, and I've heard £35,000 a year being quoted. Um, or, uh, such as under the EU blue card scheme, for a minimum contract length of one year. Only a very few UK archaeologists currently earn 35 grand or more, as I'm sure you're all aware, or are issued with an initial contract of 12 months or longer. So it seems likely that um, it seems sorry, unlikely that a substantial wage increase or longer contracts are coming our way, and therefore there must be a decrease in the number of foreign nationals working in UK archaeology. There is also the question of research funding, collaboration projects, and the status of EU archaeology students in the UK and UK students in other EU countries. I anticipate the minefield of uh, funding options will be competing for a much reduced resource with increased administration costs. This will almost certainly result in less choice, less research, and less collaboration. My personal position would be worsened if employment with European research institutes and universities becomes more difficult, if not impossible, as a result of Brexit. Um, it's already been predicted that the Erasmus Student Exchange Program will be severely curtailed for UK students wishing to travel abroad and UK universities hosting EU students. Um, as, for example, there is a predominance of female students taking part in Erasmus, this almost certainly means it will impact more heavily on female archaeologists. We come to the uh, CI, CIFA uh, 2016 survey. Um, this was an opportunity for us to find out what other archaeologists think about the situation. Uh, this was carried out in August and September of last year, and we asked respondents how they felt about Brexit, and we got 309 replies. The 11 most frequently raised topics by the respondents uh, were as set up on the screen. The results were interesting and perhaps not unexpected. Clearly, the majority of respondents believed that the Institute should strive as far as possible to maintain the situation uh, in its present status quo. <coughs> A small number of respondents clearly supported a line that the CFA should remain neutral or even pursue a pro-exit agenda. And I guess from Nick's little poll, none of you are here today. Or none of you are willing to admit. There is some indication in responses to this survey, and the results are available on the CIFA uh, website, um, that uh, some supporters of the pro-Brexit line also sought to rubbish intellectualism uh, exploit race and ethnicity for divisive purposes and sought to restrict cultural cooperation and comparison. This is perhaps not unexpected. I mean, archaeologists, we're just the same as the rest of the citizens of this country and uh, we're just as likely to hold prejudiced views. However, <coughs> Brexit might be seen as a litmus test as to how confident uh, people with uh, such bigotry have become in expressing their views. And it could, in fact, point to the, uh, the moment when our profession, rather than just being under attack from without, actually starts to become under attack from within. My view is that archaeologists need to stand up and defend our intellectualism. We need to ensure that archaeology remains an intellectual as well as a practical discipline. 
we need to ensure we do not descend to the level of loss adjustment and heritage clearance as an easy sacrifice on the altar of populism. This need for unity and clarity to understand the problem, but also not to be drawn into the mess by validating the attacks. Immigration has been cast as a justification for Brexit. Brexit. But the facts point to immigration as being entirely beneficial to both communities and to the nation. Within our discipline, migration provides the greatest stimulus in all kinds of archaeological discourse and narrative. Archaeologists need to promote the facts over myth, support each other, irrespective of our national origins. We must organise to protect our rights and also to reclaim the right to free association and to the interchange of ideas and methods. We also need to reclaim, sorry, we also need to insist that neither national nor regional borders are used to restrict the rights as academics and as field workers. To do this, we need, of course, to become self critical, and it would help if the archaeological profession in the UK recognised that it already stands on somewhat dodgy ground, particularly with regard to diversity and equality of opportunity in all of its different spheres. Brexit, although of immediate concern, should not be seen as separate or distinct from other issues which affect equality and diversity. We need to be able to defend the role of academic archaeologists as much as we campaign for the rights of vocational archaeologists. There's no place for scapegoats in archaeology, I would say, but there's plenty of room for improvement. Archaeologists need to support and promote the institutions of our discipline, and if they are under threat, to change them to suit the needs and purposes. We need to be confident in promoting our positive views of equality and diversity and not to be afraid of confronting colleagues who demur. Clearly, CIFA has an important role, representing the whole profession in the Brexit debate. And to their credit, the Institute has taken the opportunity to raise issues with appropriate government departments. However, based on the EU's initial response to Article 50, it's unlikely that archaeology or heritage in general will be treated as a special case. A sector-by-sector -sector agreement has been ruled out even before negotiations begin. I believe that CIFA needs to review all of the, post or all of the potential post-Brexit scenarios. And perhaps this could in fact form part of a wider review into the future employment structure of the whole profession. And why not kill two birds with one stone? As changes to freedom of movement will affect the ability of archaeology students coming to study at our universities, it's also a golden opportunity for the two sides of our discipline, the commercial and the academic sides, to rejoin and work together towards a shared objective and to build upon local initiatives such as demonstrated by the statement from Sheffield University um, Archaeology Department. Personally, I think it's a little disappointing that neither the recent British Academy, Academy report nor the ongoing CIFA Historic <coughs> England Review pays more than lip service to considerations such as employment and staffing. However, I would urge that it's not too late to amend that particular agenda. <coughs> So here's the rub. I think that the opportunities for British archaeologists to work in many different European corners and for EU nationals to come and do the same in the UK has contributed to a wider and a more comprehensive understanding of our discipline. Archaeology across the EU benefits from the UK being an active participant. We equally learn from our interaction with colleagues from across the continent. I believe that there are cultural and social advantages in exploring the commonality of our continent's history and prehistory. Whilst I believe that professional archaeology can survive Brexit, I fear a return to the bureaucratic complexities that existed prior to 1994, not least a return to insularity, a lessening of career <coughs> opportunities, and a stifling of the development of international collaboration. I believe that a response to the clearly political act that created Brexit does require archaeologists to engage in a political struggle to defend and to promote our discipline. And you might want to therefore consider your options before June the 8th. Thanks.